squishy, needle felted, cat, witch, stress ball. Say that one time fast. Let's find out how we made him. Hey, I'm Pam Duffy and this is a test of the YouTube premiere feature. So if you're in the notification squad and you've jumped on this video as it was released, you'll see there's a chat box to the side where I'm sitting live waiting to answer your questions on my computer. So you can question, comment, tell me what you hate or just heckle from the peanut gallery. But if you're over there, say hello the now so I'm not sitting talking to myself. And if you're watching this on the replay and you want to be notified of future little experiments like like this, click on the subscribe down below and click the bell to be part of the notification squad. Let's get into the video. Squishy cute stress ball toys are all the rage. They're a kind of foam rubber thing, I don't know, but I thought it'd be cool to make one out of needle felting because the felt is lovely and soft and if you felt it in such a way you can make it into a little stress ball critter that you can squish up and it springs back into shape. It's actually quite satisfying and you can quite deform him. <laughs> Poor little cat. This is a cute little intermediate project. If you're new to needle felting, there's a few techniques that will really help you improve your game. And the secret to making him all squishy is to not felt all the way through to the centre of the ball. Felt just round the outside. So he's firmly felted on the outside with a squishy core. So let's see how I made him. So for this, it's some nice, basic, simple shapes. I'm just taking a big wad of black. This is carded merino bats from World of Wool, and I'm felting it mainly into a circular shape. Now, I haven't rolled it particularly tight because I want it to be fairly fluffy in the middle, and I'm t felting it into a ball that's slightly flat on the bottom. So just squishing it a little into a ball shape, but I'm wanting to keep it really fluffy in the middle and felt mainly to the outside. So felting it right through just now until it gets to reasonably holding its own shape. And then I'll work on smoothing that out. And now we're gonna work on the back paws, which is just rolling into a bit of a tube and then just mainly felting into the front section where the paw is going to be so it's a flat fronted tube and i'm leaving the back fairly soft because i'm going to use that to connect onto the body at a later date so you've got two kind of humpy shapes so roll it into a tube and then felt the end of the tube flat and that will give you roughly this shape now with the Feet, with the back feet, front feet, ears and the witch's hat, we want them to be fairly firmly felted. So I'm going to go over this, spend a bit of time making it firmer. And similar for the front feet, there's going to be tubes but more rounded at the front, not working on making them flat. So the little front paws are curved down the way slightly. You could just make little balls here too, mainly just doing tubes so I can felt underneath the body to connect them a bit easier. Um, again, I'd say this project took me a, a, about a couple of hours and all this footage is filmed up to 250% speed so you get an idea of how, how long these bits take but we also have the cut sections where I sit in front of the telly and felt away forever. So there's seven main pieces to start with with this felt. There's the body, front paws, back paws and then ears and the hat piece. And so the ears are just going to be fairly fat little triangles. So pinching off big sections of fleece, just slightly smaller than what I, I chose for the back feet. And then fold, folding them into a triangle shape and felting down to get the, the point just between my fingers. Careful with your fingers, but if you felt like this rather than using, using a stabbing cushion, then you're going to be able to get a thicker, plumper shape for the ears. And I just pinch in the top in all directions so it gets slightly narrower, almost a pyramid shape for the ears, and leaving the bottoms wispy because again this is where we're going to want to connect onto the body. And the final piece for the cat is going to be the witch's hat. I'm using this gorgeous iridescent purple wool and I'm rolling the top of it into a tube that's thinner at the top and that's basically going to be felted into a round bottoms pyramid or cone shape. I'm terrible at remembering what shape names are called, I need to go back to school. But felting so the, the top's a nice sharp point and keeping 
keeping the piece moving in all directions, felting it all around. Again, the hat we want to be fairly firm. This is going to take a good bit of felting in front of the telly later on. And for the base of the hat, just keeping it into a flat circle shape as best I can. So rolling it into a sh circle shape and then felting between my fingers, careful of where your fingers are. And then after some time in front of the telly, this is the pieces we have. I've attached the cone to the circle to make the hat and then we're just going to attach the body pieces so back leg onto the body now remember the body's a circle with a flat bottom slightly so bearing that in mind the flat bottom is where we're attaching the back feet to they're going to be slightly round to the back of the body and pointing out a little bit with the flat front of them sticking forwards spend a bit of time felting them and if you need to you can add wisps of the black fiber to bond them more at the edges and then the front feet adding on the underside so they're just poking out at the front of my little cat and this is going to take as long as it needs to felt all over to make sure all the pieces are firmly attached especially if you want this to be a kind of stress toy you're going to have to felt them in fairly firmly so they don't come apart with a little bit of play with them and then felting the ears on at the top of the head in an ear position making them a little wider out now i, I think this would have ended up being cuter if the ears and the hat had been slightly smaller but this was the shape I felt like of the day. You could also wrap some fibre around a pipe cleaner to make a tail to stick on the back but I decided against that. And just keep felting all over, holding it in the positions you want to make sure that it's holding the shape that you like um, and felting over the surface of the ball as best I can without going all the way through to try and smooth out the surface so it's a hard shell and a fluffy interior and then choosing the best position to stick that little hat on as well when we come around to it. And then it's just small bits of decoration in the cat. We're really nearly done. It's such a simple piece. So I'm thinking a kind of tuxedo kitten type shape. So I'm making this curvy V, curvy upside down V from the center of his face, from just above the center of his face coming down the way and curving out, finishing just above his paws. You could do this section before you put the paws on as well, it would be slightly less fiddly. But yeah, planning in advance, we know that's not me. So felt this in until you're happy that everything's joined together and it's nice and smooth. And now we want to make his actual nose piece, which I'm taking a largish pinch of white fiber and felting it into a flat oval shape and popping that on. So a little bit of the white V's poking above his nose and his chest is white as well and felting this on into a raised oval bump. And this is his nose or his muzzle. And we're going to need some more white felt balls. So I'm just rolling out, taking a pinch for the eyeballs, making two largish ones and then another two some large ones for the foot pads. We're going to need two large and six small ones for the paw pads. If you haven't already seen, I've got a video on making cat's feet which goes into this in more detail, but basically pinching out the sections of fleece and rolling them roughly into the size you want. If you're not used to what size these to, to take of fleece, then just pinch out more than you need, make more little balls and pick the ones that best suit your needs and felting on these little paw pads, little white paw pads on the black feet. And then we're gonna move on to his eyes. So this is just gonna be the two ovals of white. And for the extra cute sort of Japanese kawaii type thing, the eyes are quite low down, level with the muzzle rather than where they might be in a real cat. So low down, widely spaced apart, so he's got a whole lot of forehead. And then for to finish off his muzzle, it's gonna be a little triangle of black for his little nose. And then twisting out some black fibers to make like a thread of fiber. I'm gonna felt that in, into a mouth shape, which comes down from the point at the bottom of his nose into a kind of W shape underneath the nose just carefully felting that in place. 
trying to make it as smooth and even as possible but it's never going to be that even if you're good at needlework you could sew this piece on or if you have a nice fine liner sharpie you could even draw it on but I just like felting the things on because I've got the fleece there I've got the needle it saves me standing up or doing anything so felt that on being careful not to defo deform the actual white nose too much and then to finish off the eyes that's just a pinch of black rolled into a ball to be the pupil onto each eye obviously trying to get them as even as possible unless you want the cat to be cross-eyed it would be cute if they were both pointing towards his nose a little bit as well and then an even smaller pinch of white makes that glimmer of white in the eye and you know me that's going to be top left when looking at the cat or top right on the actual cat that little glint of eye gives the impression that there's a light source up at the top left hand side here and then hat on, just choosing the angle that looks the most interesting, a little jaunty off to the side or straight up or whatever you feel like, and felting it nice and firmly into the cat. And that is it. You are done with your little squishy cat. And that is your cute little spooky cat. Now I wouldn't normally recommend felting pieces so soft, but because all his legs, his arms and his hat and his ears and everything are firmly felted and the ball is firmly felted on the outside, it just has a squidgy core. This gives a really nice, satisfying, as you can see, thing to play with. So give it a go. Let me know if you've had a shot at something like this and don't forget to share your felted squishies on Pam Duthie's Felting Friends on Facebook or hashtag Ben McFuzzy Lugs if you want me to see them on social media. And if you're looking for some more quick, creepy felts for Halloween, don't forget to check out my needle felting Halloween playlist where we've got creepy eyeballs, Jack Skeleton's little bat badge, and even the time lapse of me creating the beautiful Wednesday Adams needle felted painting. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the notification squad for keeping me company in the chat. I hope you did, else I sound really stupid at this stage. And if you're an artistic business person, don't forget to come back every week for creative marketing and artistic inspiration. Thank you so much.